Yo guys, how's it going? It's Arknade here. In today's tutorial, we're gonna look at how to improve your workflow on FL Studio. Before we get into the video, make sure to check out my Spotify. I've got a brand new EP out, so make sure to check that out before we get into the video. Right, let's get into it. So before I get into point one, I just want to express how most of these tips can actually be done before you produce a tune. What I mean by that is that they can basically act as a template for your tunes. So they'll all be ready to use before you start producing a tune. So my first tip on how to improve your workflow is all to do with where you place your samples. So if we just come to the browser selection here, you'll see that all my samples are in a folder called samples. And then I have a folder for each genre. So if I want to create baseline, I'll come to here and then I'll look through these. And if I want to go to drum and bass, I'll go there, etc. So you simply add this by putting, dragging the samples into the here, and then it will add the sample folder here. And then you can go into things, maybe select a drum and just drag it in. Now that's one way of doing things with samples. And the other way of course is splice. So if you have splice open, for example, you could just drag things in like this. So my second tip for improving workflow is to color code everything. So as you can see on the screen here, I've color coded my drum bus, bass bus, side chain, vocals, instrument effects, and then I've also put them into little groups here. And then I've color coded my mixer channel in the same fashion. And then I will also color the channel rack here and the patterns here. And this is great for quickly organizing your track and knowing where everything is. And it especially helps with mix down as well. If you're a bit unsure on how to do this and want to learn, make sure to check out the color coding video on my channel, which goes through it in detail. Nice. So my third tip to improve workflow is to use groups and buses. So notice how these are in groups. And all of these drums, bass, vocals, and instruments, they're in groups as well. So they all go to a certain area, such as the kick group, which in turn goes to a drum bus. So all these end up at a drum bus, which in turn ends up at a master. And this is really helpful if you want to focus on one particular area of your tune. So say I want to turn the drums off, I can literally just click this button here and turn this off. And again, having the groups like this on the drum bus means I can open the drum bus and then work on the drums. And when I'm finished working on the drums, I can simply do that. And I've got more space for my other elements. So it really just tidies things up and makes things easier to look at and easier to navigate whilst you're producing your tune. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on grouping and bussing, make sure to check out my grouping and bussing tutorial on my channel. Hi. Okay. So my fourth tip for improving your workflow is that when you drag in a sample, it will automatically link to the channel rack, the mixer and the playlist. So I'm going to show you how to do that quickly. So let's say we want to put in a kick drum on this channel here, but when we add it, normally what we have to do is change the name in this section, the um, playlist section, and then we have to change the name in the mixer section here. And then we have to change it in the channel rack selection as well. So what you can actually do is if you right click here where it says kick and go to track mode and then audio track and then assign it to kick one on the mixer. And that would be track one for you as it's not part of this. Then when I add the kick now, that will automatically assign to the channel one. And then if we were to change the color to the blue that we've been using, that automatically changes it on here to blue and it's on here to blue. So, and it's also linked to here. And you can do that for all of your selections. So you can do it here, for example, and have this all preset up so that every time you come to produce a new tune, you literally just drag in a clap 
and it's ready to go. I'm fast as fuck, boy. My fifth tip to improve workflow is a nifty one. No. My fifth tip to improve workflow revolves around the channel rack section. You can group channels. So I'm just going to show you what I mean by this. So you can select, so let's say, let's move that down there and say, you want to create a channel on here that just shows uh, where the side chain is. So the pink is the side chain for me. So if I was to select this and hold shift and select this one, and then press Alt G, it would create a group for those selections. Now, if I name this side chain, it will put them into a group called side chain. So if I was just focusing on side chain and didn't want all of this mess, you'd obviously have a lot more than this on here. I could just click this and click side chain. And you can do this as many times as you like. So I could do it for the drums as well. Just Alt G drums. And then they're in their own little channel as well. So I've got a drums channel and a side chain channel. So my sixth tip is to have sidechain set up before the track has begun. You can get these on my Patreon, the download to this FLP, which has the sidechain set up either on Volume Shaper 6 or on the default Fruity Limiter if you don't have Volume Shaper 6. So what I mean by this essentially is when you put your kick and your bass down in the right channels, so for example, the kick in this channel and the bass in this channel. When this, when the kick is playing and the bass is playing on the drop here, the side chain will be working. And what you can simply do is just come into Shapeboxer and then edit your side chain to how you think it sounds best. And then it just saves you having to go through the journey of setting up side chain every single time you make a new tune. It saves so much time. Hey, that's pretty good. So if you've been watching some of my other videos, you know that I love the compact section on the mixer channel. So my next tip is to switch between compact and extra large. And why I'd suggest doing this is whilst compact is really good for mixing and for seeing everything and for keeping everything organized, if you're doing specific mixing in that moment, I'd suggest switching to extra large. So for example, if you're really looking into the plugins and effects on each channel, then it's much easier to use extra large because instead of having to select each one and going to the to the um, the plugin on the side, the plugins are already showing on here. So say if I want if I had two bass sounds, for example, and I wanted to EQ both at the same time, I could literally just click here, click here and they'd bring them both up and then I can edit them accordingly. So that's just a really helpful tip. And then once you've done that, you can close them and go back to compact and carry on mixing. My eighth tip is to use the mixer track state feature. This little feature is hidden and it's incredible. So how you see this is if you go to the kick here and you right click on it, and you go to file, there's a little button here that says save mixer track state as. And if you click this button and save it, it will save all the plugins along here so that when you come to open it by right clicking file, open mixer track. And if you click on the file you saved, it will put the plugins on here. Now this is really handy if you're making tune after tune and you just want your plugins saved onto here. So for example, if you're using similar drums, then you can have the selection saved for a kick, a clap, a snare, etc. And I also do this with my basses as well. So I can literally go right click, open it, and then open the post-processing on a bass if I've made the bass before, if it's a similar bass if I just want to get an idea of how it could sound once it's post-processed and then go back in and edit those sounds. And that's just a really, really good tip. Really, really good shortcut. So now we've gone over 
sort of preset up things to improving your workflow i'm just going to go over a couple of final things i'd say so for my ninth tip if you can use multiple screens so as you can see here i have fl studio on here but if i were to right left click here and click detached where is it detached here i can then move this off the screen and now you can't see it anymore, but this is on my second screen. So I can have this on a completely different screen and it just gives me more space to work on the track. And then I could do the mixing on a completely different channel. And also things with like splice. So splice here, I can put this on a, a screen, which you cannot see again. And this is just a really good tip to improve your workflow. So it's not essential, but I just prefer it. So if you can get another screen, please, please use it. So my 10th tip is to not be afraid to use old files. Whoa, 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 whoa. So this can be files that you've already finished and you've already rendered out and the track's complete, or it can be old projects where the track kind of didn't go anywhere and you couldn't finish it. So what I mean by this is go back into those projects and reuse them. So reuse the drums, reuse the, some of the basses, reuse some of the instruments and try and make a new track with that information. It's really a great tip if you're struggling, if you've got writer's block, anything like that. Some of my best tunes have come from using old, old FLP files. Now my final tip is a bonus tip and it's to create a reference track section on your template so at the bottom here i'm just going to add this reference track and reference track 2 and then every time you make a tune get two tunes in a similar genre whack them in on here and then you can mute them and then every time you need some inspiration, you can simply unmute them and play them and then see how your track is playing compared to that. So make sure these reference tracks are by uh, well-renowned people, well-renowned producers uh, who have good quality mix downs and well-supported tracks. And this will see your production improve significantly if you haven't already been doing this. You can trust me on this one. And if you're constantly right clicking this like this to bring them all back and this is constantly unmuting, you can simply right click and then click mute all clips. And then if you do this, it will stay muted. That's just a little tip if you didn't already know that. And then when you want to use the reference track again, you can come back here and unmute it. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you want to download the templates that I've got here, which have most of these already in ready to go, then feel free to download it. There's a link to my Patreon in the description and you can download it from there. And make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.